Uh, this is number seven and eight. If you take a closer look, number seven is definitely has lost its lamina dura. Number eight, if you take a closer look, has the lamina dura in there. So I think most of this um, peripheral red lucency is coming from number seven. It's an easy case to retreat, but on lesions that are more than four by four millimeters, uh, you don't tend to do uh, retreat. It's usually the success rate comes down. So I just go ahead and do a uh, surgery. When we opened it up, you can actually see the dura here. You can see the PDL intact. I noticed that number eight was involved too. I could see the apex right there and it was involved, it was right there. So I just did a MTA retrofill on that. And you can see the pretty good size radiolucency. And this is a one year recall. On Epicos, usually they say about 75% success rate. And you, you know, we pass it up along to the patient and let them know that's the case. Here's also another youngster, um, still in braces. I think was about nine, 10 years old. Composite filling had some fractures along the margins here and then some amalgam too, and like already had so much work. This uh, had some irisal papitis um, sensitivity with some cold and uh, hot sensitivity. So we went ahead and uh, did uh, the root canal, the four roots. Here's a one-year recall on that. So it's healing very well. As you can see, the restorative work still needs some work. You know, have still a little bit of, looks like, uh, opening open margins there. And they came up with a study that I found, uh, actually it was just a few weeks ago, on uh, endodontic success rate, and they said there's a lot of cases that come back have failed because of restorative work. Uh, about 60%, 32% periodontal reasons they fail, and 9% endodontic reasons. Is that usually like a post-fracture, post or is it uh, from inadequate? Usually open margins, or they don't put a crown on, or uh, they don't go back to follow up with restorative work.